Hey there, I'm Tiffany Youngren, host of Next Step Nation, where we help podcasters and YouTubers with vision become preeminent thought leaders in their industries. You are about to have the incredible opportunity to listen as we dig into the who, what, and why of a podcaster show. Then at the end, we will identify one powerful how, one action that she can take for results in the next 30 days. Today, I am so excited to welcome Michelle Seiler Tucker, host of Exit Rich. Michelle, hey, how's it going? It's going great, Tiffany. Thanks for having me. Yes, welcome and thanks for being here. Exit, Re Exit Rich, the podcast, has released more than 35 episodes from June 17th of 2020 until the day of this recording, which is September 30th of 2021. Michelle Seiler Tucker is the founder and CEO of Seiler Tucker Incorporated. As a 20-year veteran in mergers and acquisitions, uh, Michelle and her firm have sold over a thousand companies in almost every vertical. Michelle is also the best-selling author of the books, Sell Your Business for More Than It's Worth and Exit Rich. So Michelle, why did you start the Exit Rich podcast? Well, I started the Exit Rich podcast a um, couple of reasons. Number one, I was coming out with my book called Exit Rich. <laughs> and the reason I, I've written three books and have started a podcast is really for exposure you know, exposure and to educate entrepreneurs, business owners, what they should be doing to plan their exit, how they should be building their business so it's sustainable, scalable, and they actually will have a sellable asset when they're ready to sell. And I really wanted to um, talk to business owners that have sold their business through me, talk to business owners that have sold their business, you know, on their own through someone else, and really highlight successful entrepreneurs that have some ninja, ninja, you know, secrets of success. And so really, like I said, for exposure, credibility, um, lead generation, of course, and education. It's, it's always, you know, my passion to educate business owners what they should be doing with their business, how they should grow their business, and how they should always build their business with the exit in mind. I love that. So would you say that, um, I mean, this is, I'm going to get, we're talking about the why right now. So I'm really going to dig in more to like why you have the show and, and what motivates you with that. But I, I can't help, but like skip over a little bit to the who, uh, mm -hmm. so are your, is your target audience, are those people more business owners or entrepreneurs who are looking to start a business, who would you say is your target audience? I, I would say both, you know, business owners for sure, uh, because many business owners have not built a sustainable, scalable, sellable business. So business owners really need this content and entrepreneurs too, because when you're starting a business, you want to start it the right way, <laughs> you know? And like Stephen Covey says, always start with the end in mind. Mm -hmm. So you know, the reason why so many businesses are not sellable is because business owners don't plan their exit. They don't think about selling until they wake up one day and go, oh my gosh, I hate, I hate my business. I hate my employees. I hate this. I hate that. And so we really want to educate business owners how to plan their exit from the beginning and startups, entrepreneurs, you know, how to build that solid infrastructure, how to build that business that where you have a business and not a job. So it's really for business owners and entrepreneurs and anyone really thinking about buying a business as well. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. So when you started this whole, th so you've been in the industry for a long time and it sounds like you've accumulated enough experience and, uh, you know, you know, your stuff and listening to your show, like you're super brilliant. So it's really fun to listen to, but is, was there just a day you woke up and you went, hi, I want to like write a book and start doing this. Or is this something like, did you write your first, first book a long time ago or how, how did all that transpire? Yeah. So I wrote my very first book in 2013 and I've always, I've always been some type of writer. I mean, I would write poetry, I would write lyrics, you know, um, I would write kids stories. I've always been writing since I was a child. And my mom, you know, I would walk around. Most girls, you know, my age were playing with toys and playing with dolls and things like that. I was walking around with a notebook, walking up to perfect strangers, asking them, what do you do? How do you, how'd you get started? <laughs> you know, so I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur and I always knew I wanted to be a writer. And so I wrote my very first book in 2013, really for 
again, exposure, lead generation, credibility, and um, and then since have have written three books and probably have another six to eight in me. Podcasting, you know, it's funny because, gosh, I remember, I think it was like 2014, 2013, 2014. I'm like, I need a podcast. I need a podcast. And I remember my marketing assistant at the time was like, okay, here's your script. <laughs> Here's a computer, read a script. And I'm like, that's not me to read a script. And so they never really took off. And then last year, you know, I was talking to so many other people that do podcasts. I'm like, I really need a podcast, especially, you know, since Exit Rich is coming out. And that's really how I got started in podcasting. Oh, got it. Well, and, um, well, and I love that too, that, um, that you kind of came to that, you're able to bring it to fruition after having considered it before. Um, and I mean, was it just like the popularity of it or what appealed you? Why did you feel like this was for me? For me, it's not so much the popularity of it. It's the education of it Mm. because there are so many business owners. Look, I speak, I'm, I'm a speaker. I speak at events all over the country. I've, I've spoken in Canada. I've spoken with some really superstars like Randy Zuckerberg and, you know, Donna Karen and um, Cindy Crawford. Was it Cindy Crawford? No, Kathy Ireland. And, you know, um, anyway, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And when I speak at these events, there's anywhere from 500 to 1,000 people in the audience. And I always ask the question, how many of you know what a business broker is or what a mergers and acquisitions advisor is and what we do. And maybe a handful of you know, people would raise their hand. So many people, so many business owners, entrepreneurs, they don't know what an M&A advisor is. Mm. They, don't know, you know, they don't know what we do. You know, a lot right. of owners will go to a real estate agent to sell their business or they'll go to their attorney or they'll go to their CPA. And so I wrote it really to educate business owners you know, that what you should be doing with your business, when you should be doing it, how you should be building an infrastructure, you know, how you should be getting an annual valuation checkup, you know, so my show is all about education, education, education. And the reason for that is because like Steve Forbes says, who endorsed my book, Exit Rich, 80% of businesses will never sell. Mm -hmm. 80% of businesses will never sell. That should be a huge wake up call. For business owners, you have less than a 20% chance of success. Mm. So it's my passion and my mission to help educate business owners why businesses don't sell. Because most business owners don't build a sellable asset. And so it's always been my passion to really educate business owners on everything you need to do to build that sellable asset. And not only that, but when I did the research for my very first book, Sell Your Business for More Than It's Worth in 2013, I learned that 90% of startups will go out of business within that first one to five years, you're at great risk, right? Mm -hmm. But then when I did the same research for exit rich, I was flabbergasted to learn that the business landscape has flip-flopped. It's not startups at great risk anymore. And this, you see how you, you see your face, your expression, you're like, wow. (laughs) And, and, and people don't know this. Only 30% of startups are going out of business now. This is a great time for startup nation to start companies. Hmm. However, however, out of 27.6 million companies in the United States, now let me just put this in perspective for you. There's 30.2 million businesses in the United States. Small business is a backbone of our economy, employing over half the U.S. workforce. When you lose small business, you lose spending power. And it's a domino effect. People lose their jobs. They stop spending. They stop going to restaurants. They stop buying things, right? And then more small businesses fold. So out of 27.6 million companies, those businesses that have been in business for 10 years or longer, 70% of them will go out of business. Seven zero. Hmm. It used to be, gosh, Tiffany, if you've been in business five years, 10 years, 15 years, you're golden. You're going to be in business forever. That's not the case anymore. You hear about the big public companies all the time talking about, Toys R Us in business, 75 years goes out of business. JC Penney's, Kmart, Steinmark, right? Disney stores. I took my daughter to go to Disney store the other day and didn't realize they were all closed. Oh, man. So, 
but the but the media doesn't talk about the private businesses on every street corner in every town in every straight state across our great nation. These business owners are exiting poor. They're selling for pennies on the dollar, closing their business, or even worse, filing bankruptcy. I'm passionate about helping saving businesses to help save the America economy. That's why I started my podcast to educate business owners how to build your sellable business so you don't become part of the 80% statistic of businesses that don't sell or how to keep your business alive so you don't become part of 70% of businesses going out of business. Right. That's amazing. That's amazing. It's funny because, you know, we went, we were talking about your why and we went from, oh, you know, exposure and education, but what you just said was really profound. And I loved what you said when you said you're saving businesses to save the economy, because that's so true. So, uh, you know, it's funny because a lot of times, you know, we get so focused on the tasks that we forget our why. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've looked at your guest list. So I know you've got a lot of amazing people who come on and, you know, I know I, you know, definitely name dropping happens a lot with like Brian Tracy and with all these people. So I know that, you know, the importance of a why I don't need to, you know, tell you about it, but I just think anyone who's listening, it's just so important to know at the core of it, because you can literally, you can go out and speak, you can write books, you can do a podcast. Um, but those are all just vehicles to get something done. And so I love that you, that you hit on that really powerful uh, statement as well. And so if I were to ask you one thing that I think is really important is what we call our audience promise. So that's like when someone listens to your show, this is what they get. Can you tell me in just like a sentence, what, what is your audience promise? What is specifically, what is their transformation and what problem do you solve for them? So to me, my audience promise is that they're going to get real content, real insight, real actionable items, things that they can go back and work on. You know, we talk about like you listen to one of my shows um, on tax strategy. That is huge because this is, you know, a company that I found because I was on their podcast. (laughs) I was on Brett's podcast. And Brett, you know, works with a group that does tax deferred trust. And one of the biggest issues with selling your business is it's not how much I sell your company for, it's what you walk away with. So, you know, there's this big thing called capital gains. Yeah. <laughs> so when you, when, you, when you put the business into the trust, you can defer the capital gains, mm-hmm. which is huge. So I like to deliver content like that, that nobody knows about. CPAs, Mm -hmm. attorneys, business owners have never heard, they've heard of the concept, but there's a lot of fly-by-night companies Mm -hmm. that over-promise and under-deliver. And this company is the real deal. So I like to bring the real deals, you know, to my show. People have really done significant, significant um, things in their life, whether it's selling a business for a million or a billion or coming up with tax strategy um, uh, methods like this. You know, so... To me, the promise, and I know I'm way over this sentence, <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's to really bring ninja smart ideas that they can incorporate and really build their business so they stay in business and, again, build that sellable asset. Okay. Um, and one thing I just want to kind of touch on, too. So, and I, I really dig into this because I think it's probably one of the most important things as a podcaster that we can do is that, you know, and marketers are always harping on this where, when we're trying to pr- like tell our audience, this is the transformation you're going to see. A lot of times we want to bring in, like, this is how we're going to do it. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the way that you do it is amazing. Like you literally do bring people on that they're just mind blowing the information Mm -hmm. and you know enough about on the topic that you're able to ask really great questions. And, um, so I think that that's great, but I do think that that's your, why that's your, how you get it accomplished. Mm -hmm. But at the end is when you said, um, so that right, usually our, the transformation comes right after the, so that, so it's like, you do all these things so that they can build their businesses to stay in business and create a sellable asset. Mm-hmm. Would you say that like for your show um, and make it a, um, that that's what you're trying to do is you take entrepreneurs and business owners. And if they listen to your show every week, 
over time, they're going to get the tools that they need to be able to number one, stay in business, but number two, build it in a way that it creates a sellable asset. Mm -hmm. Yes. So so they'll be able to build a business that's actually, like I said, sustainable and build a business versus a job. So Mm -hmm. many entrepreneurs have a job, not a business, right? Have a glorified job. They go to work at every day versus a business that works for them. So our goal is to really help entrepreneurs build that business. So it's sustainable. They can scale. And like you said, when they're ready, they have that sellable asset. There are so many things that business owners don't know. know? Mm -hmm. And it's not what you know that gets you in trouble. It's what you don't know. So I like to bring the don't knows to the show to really educate business owners so that they can have a a thriving business and continue to flourish and take care of their family. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. So let's kind of move on a little bit to the what, like the things that you're doing that is growing your show that, uh, you know, what you've seen happen, what do you see working? Number one is, um, so what do you, what do you do right now to evaluate whether or not your content is resonating and have you made adjustments over time based on what you're seeing? Yeah. So to be completely transparent here, <laughs> probably not any, and, and here's the reason why, you know, we took a hiatus from the show because exit rich was launching exit rich was supposed to launch April, 2020. Well, you know what happened in April, 2020, right? <laughs> This little pandemic. (laughs) I might remember something being said that there was a big deal back then. Yeah. (laughs) And I think, and I, and I launched Exit Rich in June, I believe June of 2020. So the Exit Rich book launch kept getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back till where we finally settled on June of 2021. So over a year later, Mm -hmm. um, I was on about 300 podcasts, other people's podcasts to promote Exit Rich. So we took kind of took a hiatus on our podcast and really um, haven't been real consistent. We were consistent in the beginning until the book launch took off. And so now we're getting back to, well, let me just put it this way. We have four shows scheduled that we had to cancel because of Hurricane Ida. Oh, geez. <laughs> that, that came our way. Um, but yeah, we, we've been evaluating it and I've been talking you know, to people about what resonates, et cetera. And and everybody says it's great content, great content. Um, I struggle with, is it too long? You know, is -hmm. is it too long? Because some people say, well, your podcast should be 30 minutes, you know, it's under 30 minutes. And some say an hour is way too long. So we are in the process right now of evaluating that and evaluating what resonates. Now, I also do my own solo podcast that are like 10 to 15 minutes just to give content. That's great. And then do you, have you or your team measured what's working, what's resonating, any feedback? Um, Like I know a lot of people look at downloads or uh, social media engagement is, do you have any KPIs that you look at for? I mean, we were looking at KPIs and, uh, you know, in 2020 for sure. And we were doing pretty well. We were growing, um, you know, pretty high, but then again, we stopped <laughs> because I don't, you know, it was very difficult to book on 300 other podcasts. Mm-hmm. And my team has been completely overwhelmed on the launch, focused on the launch and focused on, you know, getting us as much exposure as we can for radio, podcasts, and TV. So now we're going to get back into it and start measuring. Okay. So I've I've had, sorry, I have had lots of people reach out to us and say, I love your podcast. Great content. Want more of it. Things of that nature. Oh, they have. How do they reach out to you? They reach out to us through email. They reach out to us on LinkedIn. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. And then what have been the most effective ways that you've attracted listeners to your show so far? You know, we probably need some help with that, <laughs> Tiffany. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I would say so far, you know, obviously we, we push it out to our audience. Um, we make sure we have great, amazing guests that have huge, huge, huge followings, you know. And so our guest pushes out, pushes it out to their following. And, um, you know, that's about the biggest thing we've done so far. So I know we have area of improvement there. <laughs> So are you on LinkedIn? Are you pretty active on LinkedIn? Mm-hmm. 
Okay. And then, so when you have a, I'm, I'm imagining that I know the answer. Cause I feel like I might have at least be close, but so you being active on LinkedIn and you getting feedback on LinkedIn, are your guests typically also on LinkedIn and do you see mm-hmm. them sharing it? I don't know if they you? share it. You know, I don't always go look at LinkedIn myself. I have a whole team that does that. Okay. You know, I am pretty active on Facebook. I'm not always going on LinkedIn, but I have a team that monitors LinkedIn and okay. responds to all of the, the messages on LinkedIn. But pretty much every single one of our guests is on LinkedIn. Right. For sure. And all of our guests that I know have shared it. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. It seems like, I mean, the ones that I heard, definitely, it sounds like they had a great time and <laughs> would want to then, share yeah. it. So, um, and, and one thing that I liked is a lot of the guests that you have on, you could, it makes sense that they likely have the same target audience as you. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you don't compete against each other, but yet you're both speaking to the same group. So, um, that right. was really good. And okay. I just need to talk about your blog for a minute. Uh, anybody who's listening, who's listened to more than one episode of the show is just going to be so excited to know that number one, you have a blog. Number mm-hmm. two, you have content rich, mm-hmm. uh, blog posts. So they clearly are not just the description from the RSS feed is pushed out on your blog. You literally have, and it looks like there's a combination of the transcript, but also some, you know, SEO type. There is SEO and there's audiograms. And yes. And you well. have a, uh, you have both the uh, audio feed embedded for the episode, but you also have the video. Mm-hmm. Yay. Like perfect that I was just so happy to see that. So I feel like if I had a sound effect right now, it would be clapping. So there you <laughs> go. Uh, so how is your blog performing? Has your team shared with you like the traffic? Cause you've got to be getting a ton of traffic on that. Yes. Um, they haven't really shared all of that with, again, our head has been in this launch. I can't continue to say that. <laughs> yeah. And then right when we came out of the launch and we had, you know, a hurricane that we're dealing with. Um, but yeah, they, I, I got to reach back out to them and, and see how it's going. I mean, I know we're getting leads from it. I know they're buying books and, you know, I know it's working. We also, um, the, the team that we use, we were also in the wrong platform. We were in HubSpot. Okay. And so my website was in HubSpot and my team said, look, it's very difficult to Google SEO, your podcast, the blogs, when you're in that platform. So we also had to go through the cost, the time, the energy effort of getting our website out and all of our podcasts out of HubSpot and putting it into a WordPress. Mm-hmm. Well, good job. I'm just, I, I always say like, if there's one thing I could just make every podcaster do, it's exactly that. So um, mm-hmm. kudos to you. I, um, I really hope that you, and, I, and I'll email you and ask you for this, but I would love to hear some data around how they're performing because what I love about blog posts and why I believe that what you did was a really good investment is number one, I believe that probably everything's growing already organically Mm -hmm. because of it, but it doesn't die. So once even just one episode could pick up on Google and then suddenly that's number one forever. And on that topic, you're the one that's coming up. So I think that was a very good investment that you made. So do you, you. yeah, you're welcome. So, and by you, I mean you and your extensions. So all of Mm -hmm. your people, do you guys have a social media strategy for your podcast? Well, (laughs) um, you know, the team sends it over, they send over the blogs and and the grams, they send it to our guests. We post it on, on LinkedIn. We post it on Twitter. Well, not Twitter, Facebook, everywhere we can, we post it. That's pretty much a strategy. So I'm sure we can use some improvement there. Okay. And um, I'm, I feel like I probably already know the answer to this, but um, one thing is groups. So whether it's Facebook groups or LinkedIn groups, mm-hmm. do you or your team or both of you get in and like answer, like, do you, are you on groups where you are talking to people who are business owners or who are looking for businesses or who's starting a business who would be like the ideal types of people to be answering questions with an episode, like 
someone's asking questions about selling, but if I sell, then what do I buy? And what about capital gains or what about this? Like, what are my options? Um, you know, maybe a baby boomer group after listening to the last episode that, you know, they're having these conversations where you're answering the questions, things like that. Are you involved in any way in social media like that? I'm not. Okay. No. And, and honestly, it's, it's, I ask these it's questions. It's extremely time consuming. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm so busy as it is. I own multiple companies. I don't just own an M&A firm. Yeah, I own multiple yeah, yeah. businesses. Well, what else and do you so, do? Let me ask. I own other companies on medical yeah. legal companies. We have, we have clinics, multidisciplinary clinics. We own a graphics company. I've been in software. I've been in all types of different businesses. I don't just sell businesses. I partner with business owners, investing my expertise, my resources, my money sometimes, and um, fix those businesses, put them on the build to sell program. And sometimes we buy businesses and flip them. So at any given time, I typically own five to 10 businesses that I'm building to sell. That's, that's so awesome. I think that, and, and to all these questions that I'm asking you, I wouldn't even want you to be doing all of them. This is kind of my way of pulling an inventory, similar to like, if you were going into a business and trying to identify, these are not all priorities by any stretch. (laughs) No, I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea. It just takes time. And if somebody else is going to do it for me, then it has to be somebody who's got experience like I do. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And that's hard to find because most people don't have the level of experience that I have. Well, and that's, that's a really good point. In fact, the Mm. group question alone, I would say you do it or nobody does it, you know, as yeah, I mean, I did have a gentleman, you know, because we had a publicist publicist in New York, we were launching exit rich and, you know, we got bombarded with question boards and I, I have an analyst in my office that was answering all the questions, but guess what? He was coming to me to get the answers. <laughs> True. So yeah. I would feed him the answers. He would type them up and he would go put them on the message board. Oh, I love it. Well, that's good. That's very efficient. Um, okay. Well, awesome. And let me just see here. Um, as you see, like I'm constantly taking notes and putting them places because like I mentioned, one of my promises is that I will be providing you with insight based on what I'm hearing. So I always want to make sure I have it in the right spot. I love this format. I should use this for business owners. I should put business owners oh, in the hot seat. I would totally listen to that. I feel like I feel like that's your million Maybe dollar we'll idea right you. there. Maybe we'll do it with you. We'll make you the first one. I, I love it. I love it. Honestly, that's great. Well, we have a real estate company. We actually like you have several companies. So, um, yeah, I, I absolutely love it. And the whole idea of building a business to sell, uh, I, I'm obsessed with it. I'm, I wouldn't say I do it well. It'd be like, if, if you love podcasting so much and you probably like, you must, because you could do a million things to promote your book, but you're, and you could just be on other people's shows. Like there's so much value to doing that because, you know, you show up and then they do all the stuff and then you leave and go to the next one. You know, podcasters can't have 300 episodes. You don't have 300 episodes. Mm -hmm. You know I mean? It's, it's time consuming, but the fact that you are, and that's why I asked so many questions in the beginning, it's like, you could do anything. Why would you start your own show? Mm -hmm. Um, and usually there needs to be more than just like you need to get something out of it. There needs to be mm-hmm. a payoff for you. Uh, and I don't know if I wholly got to it. Usually by the end, I start asking more questions to make sure that I really understand what your payoff is. And maybe, maybe, you know, it now, like, can you see what your payoff is for doing your podcast, knowing that there are, you know, countless ways that you could be promoting your show and educating, and you're doing most of those. Why, po- why have your own podcast? Um, well, number one, I can control the content. <laughs> if it's ah, my own yes. <laughs> and I, I am kind of a little bit of a control freak as most entrepreneurs are, but I like to control the con- content. You know, I'm so well connected that I know I getting guests is easy for me. Mm-hmm. And again, it goes back to the education, you know, education, educating business owners on all the things they don't know that they should be doing. And I think it's amazing exposure. You know, it's great for Google. You Mm -hmm. know, it's a great lead gen. Um, And it's great, like you said, for popularity and exposure. Awesome. You know, as a thought leader. So, and look, this is a male dominated industry. My industry is 98% male. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times you just got to rise above the noise. (laughs) 
Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Well, awesome. And well, and of course I'm a fan of podcasting. So that's, that's, I think that that's great. Well, so. look, I, I want to start doing it in 2013, 2014, and I should have, because I'll probably have a thousand episodes. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, and one thing I'm but finding, I wasn't ready. I wasn't yeah, ready. You know? And I'm finding too, there's such a big push to have so much content that right now, the thing I'm kind of really working on and studying and what I'm finding is that having the great content, it's really promoting it because I feel like once, like if I have a question, I'll start a series on my show. So we have next up nation. I at first had like my first 12 episodes were people who were, you know, amazing in the industry. Like they had all the answers for people to all the main questions people ask. And that was our masterclass series. So the first 12 are the masterclass. The next were just podcasters that I just wanted to interview that either I like them or I like their journey. So I just want to hear about their journey. And that's the real stories. And so now, mm. of course, we're doing the hot seat series. But once I feel like the questions have been answered now, I feel like they've been answered over and over again. Then it's all about promotion. Then it's really about person. That's my own per like, there's a lot of ways to approach podcasting in every sense. Like there's different equipment that anyone could get. And there are, you know, hundreds of right answers, right? They're mm -hmm. just like running a business. I mean, you know, generally the skeleton and what people need to do and how they need to approach it, but there's a lot of right ways to do those different aspects. Podcasting is the same way, but and there's so more wrong ways. <laughs> in business, right? In More business ways. Yeah. To do <laughs> yeah. The mistakes are costlier in running a business, but <laughs> in podcasting, you have all that. And then that's one of the beauties of it is you have a lot of room for just yeah. doing stuff. Like just people want vulnerability. They want authenticity. And so the more, it's almost like the more we're just showing them what we have, the more successful your podcast can become. Mm -hmm. But also I feel like again, back to, especially, I always say busy people make the best podcasters. Mm -hmm. And if that's true, why are we trying to make a thousand episodes and bragging about it? Why aren't we making 30 really amazing episodes and then getting it out there? Like we would a book, you know, and mm -hmm. like putting it on. So, because think about it, you are concerned that your shows at one hour and most, I looked a lot of them are like under 40 minutes. They're like right mm -hmm. at that 36, 40 minute timeline. And I personally like that link because there's this thing called the fast forward button. So you can 15 seconds it forward and, you know, make it happen and you can listen to it faster if you want to. And, <coughs> but if mm -hmm. I have an episode where I'm really appreciating every, like, I mean, that one episode that we were talking about earlier, everything I heard was like amazing. It was like a bombshell, bombshell, bombshell. Mm -hmm. And if that had gotten cut off because it was supposed to be 30 minutes, I would have been felt like I was gypped. Like, why did I even spend 15 minutes on that? Like, I don't have this kind of time to just listen to half the story. You know what I mean? And, but then yeah. with the, with others where it's like, yeah, I get it. You know, thanks. I need some encouragement. Okay. I got it. I'm, I'm done at 20 minutes. So I think if we think about human behavior, instead of, um, constantly the shoulds, you know, that we're supposed to be doing. Mm. Um, and so I don't know, I'm a proponent proponent for promoting the episodes that are created with the content, like they're content rich. Like you probably have what, maybe 20 clips that you could take out of every episode that are just amazing. And then yeah. put those out as teasers and, and then, repurpose them. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. instead of going, Oh my gosh, I have to put out an episode every week. Why not do once a month or do, you know, 10 episodes in two weeks and then be repurposing that content for the mm -hmm. next three weeks so that we're, I mean, I don't know. These are the questions that I ask as a podcaster. And, and that's kind of the approach we're starting to take is, I, the, the content is magic. And, um, you know, some of them I think are less magic than others. All of them does are great. So they deserve to be promoted. However, I want to absolutely promote the ones where I feel like every minute is a nugget, you know, mm -hmm. just like with a book, it's like, you're probably talking about topics that you talk about in your book quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, but you're getting to expand on it. And then if you're like, well, if you want to just sit down and read the whole dang thing, here's the book, <laughs> you know, and that's why books are great. So, um, anyway, there's, that's my soapbox. I'll get back off the soapbox now, but <laughs> so on social media, when you send out links, what link is used? Like where do the visitors on social media go when they click that link? They go straight to, they go straight to the podcast. 
to the episode yep. on the episode that we're Apple, promoting. your blog post, where do they go? Um, gosh, that's a question for my team. <laughs> okay. I don't get involved in the mechanics of it. Okay. I'm going to do this right now. I'm just yep. going to look, I'm good. I've got your website open. Uh, I'm going to, I just clicked on Facebook. That's going to open. See, this is the hot seat. This is the part where it's like, okay, what's going to show up. Um, or you can go it, to my website too. Yeah. I'm on your website, but I want to specifically okay. know, cause this is part of the promotion piece. Mm-hmm. Um, what, where people go when they, oh, here we go. See more. Okay. So every single link is in there. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Um, and it goes straight to the show. Okay. This maybe is a different one. Cause I I'm looking at the, it's an episode. It's an audiogram or a videogram. Yeah. We yeah. have audiograms. We have the audiograms, videograms of every episode. Okay. That so, are being promoted. Yeah. So I'm, because I guess my, um, there's like efficient ways. Okay. You're a control freak. You're going to appreciate this. You're a control freak like I am. And I love blog posts because I can control the journey. Mm-hmm. So I can it go, you know, if, if we're putting all this effort into promoting it on social media and an episode goes out and there's this amazing clip with just this great, you know, this great insight is shared and someone's like, oh my gosh, I love that. I want to hear more. I want them to click on a link to my website episode. So mm-hmm. I want to hear more of that exact episode. Like what I just saw, it was definitely an audio- audiogram and it's like all the generic links that go to the pages. So it, um, well, you, have you, to, know, you have to click directly on the link for the podcast. Okay. So I'm just telling you as a user on social media that people, a confused mind says no. Right. Well, and so, I know, but I think, it, I think, okay. There's two things on social media. There's the audiograms. And there's the actual podcast that also goes on social media. Okay. I'm just trying to help you understand, like as a user, if I'm mm-hmm. seeing your podcast come through, cause you brand really well. Uh, so when I'm looking, I'm not talking about like why you do it. Like it's, there's probably really great reasons. I'm just mm-hmm. saying as a user, what my experience is. So mm-hmm. if I'm like, oh, I like your podcast. Oh, here's this. Um, and it's like, uh, the perfectly put together, perfectly constructed post, uh, how to be awesome, the mindset to success, great audiogram. It sucked me in, but yet I didn't get to click on it and just go to the episode. So there needs to be a link embedded in there, you're saying, that takes you straight to the episode. I would say one link to the one website. Link. And then the website has all those other links yep. because, and then what happens? Then you have an inbound link that is deeper linked. So it's linked Mm -hmm. into your website directly about a topic, but also I also say every page is an employee. And so they need to have a job to do and a goal to achieve. Mm -hmm. You have built amazing employees. So what I would say is just, you know, when they get there, you know, and I'm sure your team is doing this because they're doing a great job in your blog, but you know, always optimizing like that page Mm -hmm. as you're putting it out on social media for that one episode, I would just recommend, and and I'll come back to the recommendations, but these are why I'm asking the questions is like, I, I would just say that I think there's a promo piece and then they follow up with the actual podcast. I think is what they're doing. Okay. Okay. I think, (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I'm just going to tell you what I recommend is all. I don't, I don't need to like, I, I I love that you have a team up with me because I'm not taking notes. (laughs) You're a little bit crushing me right now. I of course would hope that you would listen to the show and at least look at the transcript, (laughs) but that's okay. That's okay. I just, I'll just like, you know, I'll just like produce it and promote it and you don't have to do it. No, (laughs) no. Okay. So, um, Okay. So you, at the beginning said that your purpose, the thing that I really glommed onto was this whole idea of saving businesses to save the economy. You want to uh, do what you need to do to help uh, businesses uh, build their business and create sellable assets. What is standing between you and having accomplished that already? 
I mean, I am accomplishing that already, but I like to accomplish it for the masses. <laughs> so if you yeah. see yourself in 10 years and you can just mm-hmm. see the whole crowd of people that have done exactly that, what do you think has to happen between where you're at right now and that moment in time? Probably more exposure and then probably quadruple my analyst team. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, probably more exposure. Okay. And then, um, let's see here. That's it. Okay. So the next phase I'm going to actually go in. I always jump the gun and start talking about things, ideas that I have, uh, before I get there. So you could tell I'm almost there when I start doing that, but I'm about to go into the next phase where I'm going to talk about some things that I see that you're doing really, really well, that you're really strong at. And uh, so that'll be the first thing. And the second thing will be areas of opportunity. So they won't have any, they won't even be priorities. It'll just be like, here are a bunch of ideas that I think would really help, but no urgency to them. And then the third thing I'm going to share is just, if there was just one thing, if I was boss, I always say like, if I was boss of the world and I can make you do one thing that I know would help you grow your, your audience in 30 days, this is what it would be. Okay. So be- before we do, is there anything else that you want to share about what you're doing right now with your show? Uh, what's, or anything else that maybe hasn't gotten brought up before I move into that phase? I don't think so. Okay. No, nope. awesome. but I can always stop you and come up with something. <laughs> That's great. It's funny because we start talking about this next phase and stuff always it's it's great because it brings up great conversation. Um, so yeah. yeah, definitely. If you, if anything comes up, bring it up for sure. All right. So do I have your permission to move into the part where I start sharing my take on things? Does anybody ever tell you no? Uh, they don't, <laughs> but by now they're like, I really want to hear what you have to say, but yeah, if you're, I, I ask it truly, if you don't want to do it, no, we don't go. have to. <laughs> So awesome. Awesome. Okay. So again, before you came on to the show, I promised two things. One is that I would be prepared and two, I would give you one actionable step that would get you results in 30 days. So, uh, before I do though, I always want to start with my four P's to podcast preeminence, because I feel like number one, it centers me, but also it shares with you the kind of the framework of what I, how I look at a podcast. You Number have four P's and I have six P's. In oh, my book, awesome. Rich. My awesome. book is a six P method hey. to sell your business for huge profits. Yeah. You know, what's funny is I don't know why, but P is always the letter that everybody can, uses P's, I don't but know you can come either. up with just about every a synonym for anything with the letter P I swear. <laughs> so, okay. So here are my four P's and podcast starts with B. So, so we'll just So the four P's to preeminence, um, number one is to know your purpose. So that's why we talked a lot about your why number two is to know your people. So who it is that you're talking to, which is why we talk about your, who, who, uh, listens to your show. Who is it that you want to be listening to your show and, uh, you know, the transformation that they're going to see. Number three is the promotion. Cause if, if you're the best kept secret, it doesn't really matter. Right. Like you want people listening uh, to it. And like you say, you know, you really need that exposure. So uh, getting that promotion out and number four is proceeds. So understanding whether it's a monetization or if there is an underwriting of it through your business, but understanding that it costs money, which it's so awesome because through this whole episode, I just kept thinking, I haven't said it yet. So I'm glad that I'm talking, I go through my four piece so I can remember to tell you I love that you have a team that's helping you. And usually this is where I'm having to convince podcasters, like you need a team. Otherwise this isn't a real thing. (laughs) And you have really shown you like you are really dedicated to your podcast. So I love that. Hey, you do need a team. And look, I've been on a lot of podcasts over 300 (laughs) and some podcasts I'm like, that's your background. I remember one guy looked like he was standing in the bathroom on an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Like, that's your background. Oh, so that's there's there's so a funny. lot of podcasters that probably could use your assist. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. You know, honestly, like with the background and stuff, I have this friend, she has a show called waste up wardrobe. I don't know if you know, Christine, Vart- I can't remember how to say it, Vartanian, but she is so good at uh, like personal image branding Mm -hmm. and she knocks it out of the park. Her show, uh, waste up wardrobe is premier. So if you see someone on a podcast with a really bad background, that's, you can just recommend that show (laughs) because she gives amazing tips for that for sure. So, um, okay. 
first let's start with things that I, I see that you're strong at. Obviously there's going to be a lot of things I'm missing, but these are the things that really jumped out at me. Uh, some of them I wrote down while I was listening to your show. And some of them I've been writing down as we go. Uh, number one, your guests, your guests are stellar. So I was su super impressed when I saw your guest list and their experience and their, just their expertise in, and command of the topic. Mm -hmm. And number two is energy. You have a great energy, but I also think that because of how you are as a host, it really makes, uh, it's a direct reflection of the energy that your guest brings. And so, uh, I really, really enjoyed it. And then also you just think on your feet, this, I wrote before we even got on here. I just think you're brilliant. So, you, you know, you're just kind of talking like, oh yeah, no big deal. And then all of a sudden these really, you know, more complex topics get brought up and you're just like asking these really great questions that I never would have thought of. So I super appreciated that. I also like that you have really cohesive branding when it comes to your book and your show. Mm -hmm. So as you're promoting your book, I love that everything I look at, it all makes sense. Like what you're saying, you know, so a lot of times people think branding is just the colors and the fonts and things like that, but really it's like, it's, it's holistic. It's, you right. know, what are you saying? What's your message and things like that. So I felt that your book and your podcast were very cohesive. Um, and then let's see. And then also I, when I, the one I was listening to a couple and I remember it coming up a couple of times where the, there were questions that directly tied into your book. So I know one specifically actually wrote it down, but you were, um, you were asking, what are you doing right now to exit rich? So I, I just love that question, first of all. And, um, and I thought it was really good that, that you asked that. So I'm about halfway through. Is there anything, anything that you want to say mm -mm. about those first? Okay. Um, and then also you obviously have a pro intro and outro, and then at the mm -hmm. end, you have a, a really strong call to action. So I'm always looking for that too. Uh, I feel like when a, a host has a show, the whole point is to build authority. And as you're building it, you are growing the space of people who actually want to hear what you have to say. And mm -hmm. so when they're off the show, they're like, okay, well now what? And so I like that it, there's an obvious next step for them. So I really, again, super rare. So I was really happy to hear. What, what do you think my, so what is, what, what did you hear as my strong call to action? Okay. Well, this is also in the area of opportunity. So I'm just going to go ahead and we'll just cover <laughs> this right now. I like that you had it. I like that it was clear and I like that it was more than one. Um, your call to action, you had your book, mm -hmm. um, the title of the book, which is awesome because it's the same title as the podcast. So super easy. And again, I think a lot of times people forget, a host forget specifically that for someone to go from a podcast app, again, we're talking about user experience and people's behavior, right? We want action. We want them to actually buy the book. Mm -hmm. So they have to get out of the podcast and then go buy the book. Right. right. And so, right. um, so the fact that they both match awesome. Um, now your find your exit.org is not live. So that was the website that was given at the end. So there's that. When was um, on what show was that? One of the last two. Find your exit, find your exit.org. I mean, I wouldn't have had that web address if I hadn't heard it. So, <laughs> so yeah. So anyway, so there's and that. that was said by me or was that? No, that's there? your professional outro. Yeah. Also, they, need, they need, okay. So can I say something there? Yeah. They need to change that because here's yeah. the reason why. And thank you for telling me that. Cause I thought they did change that. They started out. We started out with find your exit. And then I'm talking to my team going, why are we doing find your exit? First of all, somebody else has it. Even though it's dormant, somebody else has it. We need to go to Exit Rich. So they were supposed to change that in the outro. Your intro still says find your exit. They, so it, see, yeah. they were supposed to change us. That. So that was my other for bringing that area of opportunity. Yeah. Because so that's the, wrong. It needs to be exit rich. Yeah. So, <laughs> so your branding's cohesive from your book to your actual show, but your intro and your outro definitely don't, aren't cohesive. Yeah. Well, that's a team, not just what they're supposed to be doing. Okay. <laughs> I, we're just problem solvers. These are just problem yeah. solving. So it's all good. But, um, and there's a lot of pieces and you are doing a lot. So it's like, you're busting out with this podcast with a million different pieces to it. So it's a good opportunity just to kind of, 
I mean, that's why we inventory. That's why I'm like looking at all these things and not, I'm trying not to make assumptions. And Mm. so, but this is the time to clean it up. So it's not like, oh, this is terrible, but there are areas of opportunity to, to grow it and better now than, I mean, I'm glad that you're on the show now versus, you know, down the road. So it's all, Mm. or the, or the team's probably like, crap, why are you on it already? We're going to do that next week. <laughs> so I don't we know. I'm, a long time ago. Cause we made that change about six months ago, seven months ago. Oh shoot. Okay. Well, anyway, so that's, but thanks that's for bringing that to my, t- see right there. This was worth it. <laughs> Yay. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> and then, uh, I know imagine. Yeah. So, um, and then also your audience promise. I'm really glad that at the be. so this is your professional intro, uh, at 11 seconds, it says dedicated to helping you find a path to retire rich and move on to your next adventure by exiting your business for the desired dream price you deserve. I love that you have that. I would just say, make it more concise. It was, a, I had to listen to it like five times because my mind started to wander about four seconds in. So I would just say like, I, your audience promise is so good. You could probably say it in half the time in half the sentence. Does that make sense? Yep. yep, Um, yep. and then, um, let's see. Okay. So, but I love that you have it. So I love that you have an audience promise. Almost nobody does that. So that's amazing. Nice website. So that made the list early before we even got on, on this call, uh, the episode blocks, I blogs, I already uh, gushed about that. So you have embedded audio and video. The video really helps with SEO because Google owns the world and it's embedded with the YouTube. So outstanding. Good job, SEO team. Shout out right now. (laughs) Um, and then I also, I added this while we're talking. I love the amount of time. I think it's perfect. And for all the reasons that I already said, well, I appreciate that. Cause you know, I was going back and forth. Gosh, what do I do? Cause you know, it's kind of like you go to an attorney and ask a question (laughs) and you get what 10 different opinions, you know? And so, I mean, I even had, I was on someone's podcast one time that breaks it up into four sections. Mm -hmm. And each podcast is like, you know, 15, 20 minutes long. And he says, Michelle, yours are way too long, way too long. So he's like, let me help you. Let me help you with your podcast, all this stuff. And he goes, you should do four and then just throw them out there, you know, for the week. So now you got four a week, but you're recording once. But I don't know. You know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, you know? Again, it, I'm not going to just... say podcasting is my core competency. So I'm not sure. You know, I've had a lot of people say, well, you want to keep it under 30 minutes because that's most people's drive time. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. but also it, it, it continues where you leave off when you leave. You know what I'm saying? Like if yeah. it's a good episode, they're going to listen. If it's something that's slower, like I'm one of those, like, if it's one of those, like, yeah, I have the right mindset. I listen at a faster speed. So it, it takes like half the time to listen to it. So, Mm -hmm. um, but where it's like every minute, there's like this whole new thing that I wasn't doing that I need to hear every word of it. I would listen to it and then stop and then come back and listen the next day. I am a control freak and you are talking to control freaks. So you, you know, when someone gives you advice, just think, are there, is their audience control freak? Are, Are they control freaks or are they not? Also, do they have as many listeners as I want? You know what I mean? And do they do it that way? Because I also interviewed someone who had like a time limit for their show and it didn't feel, it didn't feel um, like people were allowed to unfold, right? It's like, I have a question answered. I have a question answered, question answered at the end. And whereas if you, you know, think about it, sometimes your guests, like I felt a little bit like this when I was listening where they have an agenda. But because you're able to ask questions and either clarify or take it further because you're like, oh, my guests are going to, or my audience is going to love this. We are advocates for our audience. That's our job. And so, Mm -hmm. and we are caretakers of the guests. Those are our two new best friends, our audience and our guests. And so if you can't, like, I feel like I'm not taking care of my guests if I make them listen to it over four days. <laughs> like, I'm like, I don't think my friends would want to listen to it. And for either they're going to want to listen to it and just stop when they, yeah, they like actually stopping. name it different segments and they have, you know, in their defense, they have a huge, huge, huge following. Well, huge, there you go. Amount of downloads, yeah. But they name it different episodes. So it's not just okay. one episode. Now, granted, I'm in the same clothes. <laughs> But they name it different. They name it different episodes. Okay. Well then you know? maybe and that's awesome. Maybe that's yeah. It, whatever I, I don't do, know. I, you know just... I was, I was going to do that, but then it's like more work, right? It's more work because mm-hmm. it's more editing. It's more editing. And then you got to do the autograms for that. And you got to do the blogs for that. 
And, you know, doing those four posts to me, I mean, doing the work for those four is so much more than doing the work on the one. Yeah. 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 And I've never well, and had it, any listeners tell me it's too long. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the other side of it too is, is there's a production progression. So yeah. like when you're starting, you're just trying to get listeners and you're, you're having to prioritize what's worth doing more of. Mm. And, and I'm a big advocate of, you know, if you're doing something and it's working, put more of your resources into that. Yeah. So if you're like, well, I mean, my shorter episodes, people listen to more often, you know, I get a lot more listeners then I would say, make a decision about that. But right now you're just trying to grow your show. So the more that you're adding to, I would just be really careful about it. making sure that in your mind, you know, the reason you're doing it, like you've waited out and you've listened to what this person said, you listen to this person. Um, and you could even, you know, once you have a big enough audience, you can test, you know, yeah. it's, it's just tough right now. Cause I would just say like, keep doing what you're doing and then make those adjustments mindfully. And they're know? not always an hour. I mean, it's really dependent upon the guest, you yeah. know, the, the tax strategy show was a tremendous amount of content. Like you said, it was mm-hmm. go to nugget after go to nugget after go to nugget and stuff that people have never heard of before. Mm-hmm. So on a show like that, you don't want to cut him off. Right. You know, too soon. You want to get all the content out, but I've had other guests where I'm like, okay, done in 45 minutes. You know, I've had other guests that goes on for an hour and a half, mm-hmm. you know, Dr. Nito Cobain, who's president of high point university sits on the board, board of lazy boy and Panera bread company are not great harvest bread company. I better say the right company, <laughs> great harvest bread company and a bunch of other companies. I mean, he probably went on for like an hour and a half. Mm. Uh, I was on a podcast yesterday and when we did the prep call, he said, Michelle, it's going to be 27 minutes. I never go over 27 minutes. I said, okay, what do you want me to talk about? And he goes, I want you to talk about the STGPS exit and the six P's. And I said, well, that's going to take more than 27 minutes because otherwise I'm going to be running through it. I'm going to be speaking so fast. It's going to be like drinking from a fire hose. Nobody's going to, nobody's going to grasp it. Mm-hmm. And so he ended up going an hour with me yesterday. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And then he's like, this was the best show ever, Michelle. Aww. Aww. Well, as soon as we're all Joe Rogan, we can have like four hour episodes and not have to worry about it anyway. So I don't think so, I would ever want four hour episodes. I wouldn't either. I mean, yeah, I could. I mean, honestly, he is such a good interview. I don't let, I mean, I hate to say it, but I don't love his shows. I, 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 I he's probably my number one uh, interviewer. Like I respect how he interviews more than anyone. And I love how he does his show, uh, just for my own personal taste, they're hard for me to listen to the whole thing, <laughs> but, but just as a study of asking questions and relation, you know, taking care of the guest, I just think he's brilliant, but yeah, his shows are super long and he has a lot of listeners. So <laughs> there's that. So I think there, again, there's a lot of right routes and yeah. more room for mistakes in podcasting than building a business. So, um, <laughs> awesome. Well, can I move into areas of opportunity? I know we've kind of dabbled into some of them, but is it okay if I formally move into the areas sure. of opportunity? Awesome. Absolutely. And like I said, none of these are like, Oh, you have to do them. Uh, but these are just some things that I've seen have worked either for our show or for the other podcasters. Um, you know, usually when I'm interviewing people, a lot of them have a lot of listeners and a lot of episodes. And, um, anyway, these are the things that, that I can see work. Number one was your, um, was your, uh, intro and outro. So that's done. The other thing is that, um, the editing of the intro, when I listened to the Brett Swartz episode, there was nine seconds between the end of the intro to the beginning of you talking. Hmm. So I just would maybe, and that's an easy little chat or sometimes I know for us, we have software that says how much to overlap it. So sometimes it's just like, there's a lot of extra space at the end of the intro. And that's when I had my intro delivered to me, that was the case. There just was a lot of space at the end. So the team easily can either just, you're going to have a new one anyway, just make sure that the beginning has not as much extra space at the end. And that's super easy. (laughs) Uh, and then we talked about the call to action. Oh, and the other thing, one thing I wanted to talk about too, was the blog post. So I'm imagining so many people are going to your blog. If they aren't already now, they're going to be that just being really clear what a conversion is for someone on the, on that page. So if you were building a landing page, 
where people were looking up a topic and it went to a single episode, what is the most important thing that they do? And I know now you have a pop-up, I think that comes up and I would just say like, just make sure that that pop-up is, um, is the number one thing and that there's not too much for them to do because already there's like a lot of words uh, to embedded media, but I would mm-hmm. just say like, know what the one thing is that you want them to do before they leave okay. and have your team really optimized for that action. If it's buy a book, then have them click on your Amazon link. If it's sign up for your email list, then have them, but pick one thing. Don't have a lot of things that you want people to do. Cause they'll just mm-hmm. get confused. <laughs> So, yeah. um, so those are the areas of opportunity, anything else that you wanted to ask or bring up before I share my, if I was queen of the world part of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I'm good. These are all good points. Thank you. Awesome. Well, I think right now, one thing that when I, when I do the, if I was about the boss of the world and only one thing that could help you more than anything, I always try to lean into what you're already doing and what would take the least amount of effort to get the biggest result. And honestly, right now you're already going to do it in the next couple of days. And that is get the intro and outro, um, tightened up. And yeah. within that, just also, it, it's a good time when you're doing the intro to maybe look at the wording of that amazing audience promise and just retool it a little bit so that it's really concise and that people have an emotion when they see it. Like, yeah, because I almost had it. Like I'm reading it because I feel like I'm prime audience. Like I should be listening to every episode of your show. And you it was like almost there. And then you kind of lost me at the end. Not because it was confusing. I think I just, you know, we're all um squirrel, you know. (laughs) So, So so if I was boss of the world, I would have you tighten that up tighten up the intro, make sure that your show starts right after it. And I think that your audience, you won't lose because at first 30 seconds, like if you can't, you do all this stuff to get them to your show. So it's just that idea of keeping them is going to be the easiest thing for you because you're doing a lot of things that are amazing. I, I, w- I wouldn't even worry too much more about the social media. You already have that systematized. I would say too, and we, we touched on it. I didn't actually type it up, but I I also recommend that you have that link going to your blog post that whenever Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's an audiogram or a clip or a quote or anything, if it has to do with an episode or a guest that that link, there's one link and it goes directly to uh, them because it's going to help not only on SEO, but it's going to drive people who are already interested in the content directly to your show, to the spot that they were interested in. So it's going to prove that you're kind to them, that they're reading something and you make it really easy that they're going to go to the next <laughs> step. So feedback, like, was that helpful or I was very helpful. Yeah. All of that was helpful, especially with the intro and the outro. Cause I didn't realize <laughs> they still had the wrong name, you know? Oh, uh, well, I passed them with that a long time ago. Yeah. That'll, that sounds like that'll get handled really quickly. By the time everybody hears the show, it's going to be right on track. And I recommend everybody go listen to it. Cause it is, it is brilliant. And Thank your, you. your website, um, is Siler Tucker, S C I L E R T U C K E R.com. Correct. M I C K E Y M O U S E. And we will, we will have that linked in our show yeah. notes as well as on Spotify, um, and, uh, in the, and, uh, Apple and the different podcast apps. Is that the best place for people to find you as well as probably looking you up? Uh, yep. Find me on LinkedIn. Yep. And then of course your book, why don't you talk a little bit about your book before we go? Sure. So exit rich was endorsed by Steve Forbes, who says exit rich is a gold mine for entrepreneurs as they leave way too much money on the table when they sell their business. Sharon Lecter, have you heard of Sharon Lecter? Yes. She's my co-author. So Sharon oh. Lecter wrote Rich Dad Poor Dad with Robert Kiyosaki. Mm-hmm. She's a CPA, financial literacy expert, and she writes the mentor's corner after each one of my chapters. Um, And then uh, Kevin Harrington, original Shark on Shark Tank, writes the foreword. Plus, we've got glowing testimonials from like Brian Tracy, Tom Hopkins, Jack Canfield, Mark Victor Hansen, um, Brandon Dawson from Grant Cardone's team, and Les Brown, you know, the list goes on and on. Exit Rich is not just about selling a business. You know, Exit Rich is all about building a sellable asset. The first half of Exit Rich is all about 
starting with the end in mind, how to build your GPS exit model, the seller sanity check, the, the, the soul searching that you really have to do to come crystal clear on what your objectives are and what you're trying to accomplish. And then we get into, you know, um, how to build that exit and the five types of buyers and how you reverse engineer your plan and your why. You know, we talk really a lot about the why mm -hmm. <laughs> and exit rich. And then we go into how to build your infrastructure using the 6P system. And then the second half of, of exit rich is about selling your business. And then we have a chapter in there, build to sell, because uh, a lot of businesses are really not sellable. So Exit Rich um, is a Wall Street Journal best-selling book, and it's USA Today, had the numbers to make the New York Times. <laughs> and of course, we made several categories on Amazon. So you can get Exit Rich at Amazon. You can get it at your favorite bookstore. It's also coming uh, to Hudson at all the Hudson Airport stores soon. Um, but if you want to get all the bonuses, go to ExitRichBook.com and ExitRichBook.com for $24.79 plus shipping, we will send a hard cover to your doorstep. We'll also email you a digital copy. We will give you a lifetime membership into the Exit Rich Book Club that has video content, me really taking deep dives in different strategies and techniques. And then we have documents, documents to operate your business, documents to sell your business. So like sample employee handbooks, operational manuals. To sell your business, we have sample letter of intent. Most business owners, never they've never even seen a letter of intent. Mm -hmm. Purchase agreements, due diligence checklists, closing docs, all the documents to operate and sell your business. If you're trying to, to craft these with an attorney, it will cost you over $50,000 to create. I know because I've spent the money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we also are giving a 30-day free membership into Club CEOs, which is an entrepreneurship mastermind where we really help business owners pivot and build that sustainable, scalable, and sellable asset. So all at exitrichbook.com. Now, if you do buy the book somewhere else, just email us to receipt at marketing at silertucker.com and I'll still ensure that you get the bonuses. Love it. That's so awesome. So I'm going to make you boss of the world for a minute. If there's one thing that you know that, that most business owners mess up and you could just make them do every time to help them build an asset that is sellable, what would that one thing be? Ugh, that's so hard because there's so many things, but I would say, I would say the one thing to start is follow the GPS exit model, because mm -hmm. that is the strategy. That is the plan that's going to get you to build your business for your desired outcome. Because the GPS exit model, model is all about number one destination. You know, most business owners don't have a destination. If you want to drive somewhere, what do you do? You go to Google Maps, you plug in your destination. If you don't, where do you go? Nowhere. Yeah, right. <laughs> and most business owners don't plan to fail. They fail the plan. So you mm -hmm. got to have that destination. That's number one, because business owners don't think about selling until a catastrophic event occurs. Internal or external, internal is health issues, divorce, you know, death, <laughs> partner disputes, this pandemic that we've been living in. The worst time to sell your business is during a catastrophic event. Most business owners wake up one day and say, I got to sell my business. I hate it. Mm -hmm. well, we don't want to get to that point. We want to get to the point where you're saying, I want to build my, I'm building my business to sell for my desired sales price. This is my destination, which is $20 million. Pick a number. And then the next step is, where are you starting from? What's your current evaluation? What is your business worth today? And most business owners never get a business evaluation. I just talked to a gentleman the other day, been in business 40 years, never had his business evaluated. Also never took a vacation. Mm. And he's got a business that we could probably sell between seven to $10 million. Mm. And his desire sales price is 15. So we're going to help get him there. But you got to know where you're starting from. And you need a business evaluation checkup an annual business valuation, business valuation checkup because there are events that increase valuation. There are events that decrease valuation. So you need to know where you are every time. I mean, it's just crazy to me, Tiffany, because we go to the doctor, right? Once a year to get a, a physical checkup. We take our car to the mechanic to get a tune-up. But we don't take our most valuable possession, which is our business, and get an annual valuation checkup to measure where we are. Mm -hmm. You know. So I would say really start that GPS exit model 
because it also entails, you know, once you determine who your buyers are going to be, there's five types of buyers, then it's all about creating those synergies and building your business with the proper infrastructure on the six Ps. Awesome. I love it. Well, I am going to have to check out your book. I think um, anyone who's like me and completely like I, I could totally go on that whole topic now, but I feel like I, I kept my promise. I'm going to keep everybody on track. Um, I highly recommend your show. I really enjoyed it myself. And uh, thank you so much for being here and taking your time to, to, you know, really look at your podcast in a, in a new light. Thank you for having me on. I love your format. I love what you're doing. And I love the advice that you gave me. Aww, and in thanks. fact, we should talk about me doing this format a hot seat. I know. <laughs> I so love nice. it. I love that <laughs> idea. I would, I, I swear I would listen to it all day. I think, um, <laughs> I think it's awesome. I mean, I, it's hard. So I will tell you and anyone who's, who's considered do, considering doing it, what I love about it. Number one is I get to do what I love, which is really help entrepreneurs. You know, I started marketing as a content marketer, and then I was doing podcasts for because I liked doing podcasts and I wanted to meet people and get to know more business owners. And I feel like my superpower really is interviewing and, and understanding people and, and what they're trying to say and where they're trying to go. And I'm naturally curious. Uh, and I had, I had two coaches at the beginning of the great pivot of 2020 who were like, why do you just do all that? Like you have all these systems. Cause I'm a total geek about systems and processes and automation. And they're like, you have all these great things you've built for yourself. Why don't you help other people with that. <laughs> and so that's when I went, I love podcasting. So now I get to talk to people about it and, and help them. Yeah. But so when you sit, so imagine you're going to sit down and do this thing that you love, where you get to talk to all these business owners, or if you're listening to the show, you know, whatever it is that you love and what you're podcasting about, but really ha it's, it's a consultation. So you're doing mm -hmm. two jobs at once. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. really, I, and I don't even believe in multitasking. I don't think it's, I think it's made up. I, I think, think multitasking is a myth. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. I just think it's ridiculous. So I don't believe in multitasking, but it's, it's seriously a spot where you're having to really do a lot of things at once, but as a speaker, you have to do the same thing or, you know, in a lot of other, um, places in life, you find yourself having to do that. And, and it really is a juggle because when, if you, I, I really feel like what I'm imagining what the listeners are hearing, but when I do a hot seat, most of my focus is on delivering on my promise. If I make a promise, I want to keep it. Uh, so, and in my podcast, I try to keep it balanced. I usually on the show will try to be like, I'm equal parts taking, you know, like I'm acting on behalf of the audience, but I'm also taking care of the, of the guest and trying to understand uh, the message. And so it, it's, you know, I need a nap after one. And sometimes I have two in one day and, but I don't book more than two in one day. So that's my, that's my takeaway for, from that whole spiel is don't do more than two in one day. <laughs> so. I was, I was going on five podcasts a day. Oh man. When I was promoting my book, I never do two of my own podcasts in one day and probably never will. You know, I'll do, I can do two a week, but I would never do two a day, but I was literally going on five people's podcasts a day. And what I love about podcasting is that that's how I met the tax strategy guy. You know, I've met so many great people, phenomenal, phenomenal people that I'm building relationships with and friendships with the tax strategy guy and I are like best friends now. Mm. And I would have never met him if I didn't go on his podcast. Yeah. So it's not just about going on somebody's podcast and getting a message out there. It's also about building relationships, mm -hmm. you know, that, that can be extremely mutually beneficial. A hundred percent. Well, I, in, in my world, it's all about, I started podcasting because I wanted to build, I wanted to meet people, make friends. And I feel like that's really my top priority even yeah. to this day. So and you can meet people from all over the world. I mean, yep. I have a podcast in Australia and Dubai and New Zealand and, you know, Bahamas. I remember this cute little husband and wife couple that interviewed Aww. me from the Bahamas, but yeah, you can meet people from all over the world. It's, it's quite interesting. Absolutely. Well, thanks again, Michelle. I just, it's just been such a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. Of course. Yes. And I appreciate welcome. your feedback. I really appreciate your feedback oh, you good. In, a, in a positive way. Oh, good. I'm, <laughs> I'm glad it was helpful. Well, and to everyone who's listening, remember, don't be average, be brave, take action and make magic happen. Thank you so much for listening.